Today is a feast day on the 1962 and prior liturgical calendar for the church. Another one of those Marian feast days that one of the popes of the council in their great wisdom thought that we had too many of, so they removed from the calendar. Today is the feast of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Its observation comes from the Proto-Evangelium of James, and so today what I have for you is the first section of the Proto-Evangelium of James that details the life of Our Lady from before her conception through her betrothal to Joseph. I hope you enjoy. And remember that this document is technically considered apocryphal, but the popes of the previous eras all put enough stock into the document to warrant basing feast days off of its contents. Keep that in mind. Again, have a blessed Saturday. The Proto-Evangelium of James The Birth of Mary, the Holy Mother of God, and the Various Glorious Mother of Jesus Christ In the records of the twelve tribes of Israel was Joachim, a man rich exceedingly. And he brought his offerings double, saying, There shall be of my superabundance to all the people, and there shall be the offering for my forgiveness to the Lord for appropriation for me. The great day of the Lord was at hand, and the sons of Israel were bringing their offerings. And there stood over against him Reuben, saying, It is not meet for you first to bring your offerings, because you have not made seed in Israel. And Joachim was exceedingly grieved, and went away to the registers of the twelve tribes of the people, saying, I shall see the registers of the twelve tribes of Israel, as to whether I alone have not made seed in Israel. And he searched and found that all the righteous had raised up seed in Israel. And he called to mind the patriarch Abraham that in the last day God gave him a son, Isaac. And Joachim was exceedingly grieved, and did not come into the presence of his wife, but he retired to the desert, and there he pitched his tent, and fasted forty days and forty nights, saying in himself, I will not go down either for food or for drink until the Lord my God shall look upon me, and prayer shall be my food and my drink. And his wife Anna mourned in two mournings, and lamented in two lamentations, saying, I shall bewail my widowhood, I shall bewail my childlessness. And the great day of the Lord was at hand, and Judith, her maidservant, said, How long did you humiliate your soul? Behold, the great day of the Lord is at hand, and it is unlawful for you to mourn. But take this headband, which the woman that made it gave to me, for it is not proper that I should wear it, because I am a maidservant, and it has a royal appearance. And Anna said, Depart from me, for I have not done such things, and the Lord has brought me very low. I fear that some wicked person has given it to you, and you have come to me to make a sharer in your sin. And Judith said, Why should I curse you, seeing that the Lord has shut your womb, so as not to give you fruit in Israel? And Anna was grieved exceedingly, and put off her garments of mourning, and cleaned her head, and put on her wedding garments, and about the ninth hour went down to the garden to walk. And she saw a laurel, and sat under it, and prayed to the Lord, saying, O God of our fathers, bless me and hear my prayer, as you blessed the womb of Sarah and gave her a son Isaac. And gazing towards the heavens, she saw a sparrow's nest in the laurel, and made a lamentation in herself, saying, Alas, who begot me, and what womb produced me? Because I have become a curse in the presence of the sons of Israel, and I have been reproached, and they have driven me in derision out of the temple of the Lord. Alas, to what have I been likened? Because even the fowls of the heavens are productive before you, O Lord. Alas, to what I have been likened, I am not like the beasts of the earth, because even the beasts of the earth are productive before you, O Lord. Alas, to what I have I been likened, I am not like these waters, because even these waters are productive before you, O Lord. Alas, to what have I been likened, I am not like this earth, because even the earth brings forth its fruits in season and blesses you, O Lord. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by, saying, Anna, Anna, the Lord has heard your prayer, and you shall conceive and shall bring forth. Your seed shall be spoken of in all the world. And Anna said, As the Lord my God lives, if I beget either male or female, I will bring it as a gift to the Lord my God, and it shall minister to him in holy things all the days of its life. Behold, two angels came, saying to her, Behold, Joachim, your husband is coming with his flocks. For an angel of the Lord went down to him, saying, Joachim, Joachim, the Lord God has heard your prayer. Go down hence, for behold, your wife Anna shall conceive. And Joachim went down and called his shepherds, saying, Bring me hither ten she-lambs without spot or blemish, and they shall be for the Lord my God. Bring me twelve tender calves, and they shall be for the priests and the elders, and a hundred goats for all the people. And behold, Joachim came with his flocks. And Anna stood by the gate and saw Joachim coming. She ran and hung up on his neck, saying, Now I know that the Lord God has blessed me exceedingly, 
For behold, the widow no longer a widow, and I, the childless, shall conceive. And Joachim rested the first day in his house. And on the following day he brought his offering, saying to himself, If the Lord God has been rendered gracious to me, the plate on the priest's forehead will make it manifest to me. And Joachim brought his offerings and observed attentively the priest's plate when he went up to the altar of the Lord. And he saw no sin in himself. And Joachim said, Now I know the Lord has been gracious unto me and has remitted all my sins. Then he went down from the temple of the Lord justified and departed his own house. And months were fulfilled, and in the ninth month Anna brought forth. And she said to the midwife, What have I brought forth? And she said, A girl. And said Anna, My soul has been magnified this day. And she laid her down. And the days have been fulfilled. Anna was purified and gave the breast to the child and called her name Mary. And the child grew strong day by day, and when she was six months old, her mother set her on the ground to try whether she could stand, and she walked seven steps and came into her bosom. And she snatched her up and said, As the Lord my God lives, you shall not walk on this earth until I bring you into the temple of the Lord. And she made a sanctuary in her bedchamber and allowed nothing common or unclean to pass through her. And she called the undefiled daughters of the Hebrews, and they led her astray. When she was a year old, Joachim made a great feast, and invited the priests and the scribes and the elders and all the people of Israel. And Joachim brought the child to the priests, and they blessed her, saying, O God of our fathers, bless this child, and give her an everlasting name to be named in all generations. And all the people said, So be it, so be it, Amen. And he brought her to the chief priests, and they blessed her, saying, O God most high, look upon this child, and bless her with an utmost blessing, which shall be forever. And her mother snatched her up, and took her into the sanctuary of her bedchamber, and gave her the breast. And Anna made a song to the Lord, saying, I will sing a song to the Lord my God, for he has looked upon me, and he has taken away the reproach of mine enemies. And the Lord has given the fruit of his righteousness, singular in its kind, and richly endowed before him. Who will tell the sons of Reuben that Anna gives suckle? Hear, hear you twelve tribes of Israel, that Anna gives suck. She laid her to rest in the bedchamber of her sanctuary, and went out and ministered unto them. When the supper was ended, they went down rejoicing and glorifying the God of Israel. And her months were added to the child, and the child was two years old. And Joachim said, Let us take her up to the temple of the Lord, that we may pay the vow that we have vowed, lest perchance the Lord send to us, and our offering not be received. And Anna said, Let us wait for the third year, in order that the child may not seek for father or mother. And Joachim said, so let us wait. And the child was three years old. And Joachim said, Invite the daughters of the Hebrews that are undefiled, and let them each take a lamp, and let them stand with the lamps burning, that the child may not turn back. And her heart captivated from the temple of the Lord. And they did so until they went up into the temple of the Lord. And the priest received her, and kissed her, and blessed her, saying, The Lord has magnified your name in all generations. In you on the last of days the Lord will manifest his redemption to the sons of Israel. And he set her down upon the third steps of the altar. And the Lord God sent grace upon her, and she danced with her feet, and all the house of Israel loved her. And her parents went down marveling and praising the Lord God, because the child had not turned back. And Mary was in the temple of the Lord, as if she were a dove that dwelt there, and she received food from the hand of an angel. And when she was twelve years old, there was held a council of the priests, saying, Behold, Mary has reached the age of twelve years in the temple of the Lord. What then shall we do with her, lest perchance she defile the sanctuary of the Lord? And they said to the high priest, You stand by the altar of the Lord. Go and pray concerning her, and whatever the Lord shall manifest unto you, that also will do. And the high priest went in, taking the robe with the twelve bells into the holy of holies, and he prayed concerning her. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, saying unto him, Zacharias, Zacharias, go out and assemble the widowers of the people, and let them bring each his rod, and to whomever the Lord shall show a sign, his wife shall she be. And the heralds went out through all the circuit of Judea, and the trumpet of the Lord sounded, and all ran. And Joseph, throwing away his axe, went out to meet them. And when they assembled, he went away to the high priest, taking with them their rods. And he, taking the rods of all of them, entered into the temple and prayed. Having ended his prayer, he took the rods and came out and gave them to him. But there was no sign in them, and Joseph took his rod last, and behold, a dove came out of the rod and flew upon Joseph's head. And the priest said to Joseph, You have been chosen by lot to take into your keeping the virgin of the Lord. But Joseph refused, saying, I have children, and I am an old man, and she is a young girl. I am afraid, lest I become a laughingstock to the sons of Israel. And the priest said to Joseph, Fear the Lord your God, and remember what the Lord did to Dathan, and Abiram, and Korah. 
how the earth opened, and they were swallowed up on account of their contradiction. And now fear, O Joseph, lest the same things happen in your house. And Joseph was afraid, and took her into his keeping. And Joseph said to Mary, Behold, I have received you from the temple of the Lord, and now I leave you in my house, and go away to build my buildings, and I shall come to you. The Lord will protect you. And that is the Proto-Evangelium of James, up from the time of, well, before Our Lady's conception to not only her birth, but also to her meeting and betrothal to Joseph. Stay tuned. I will eventually finish this document. Have a blessed Saturday.